We're going to look at a completely different way of testing our web pages, and this is using something called a headless browser. And a headless browser is kind of a program that we can use to simulate human interaction, like clicking a button or you know scrolling a page or typing something into a box and then what we can do is check the various properties of the elements and see if they um, are rendered correctly and we're going to be using something called zombie for this so what I'm going to do is show you an example project that we can test and then I'll show you how to install zombie then I'll go through some zombie methods that we can use to test it and finally we'll look at completing the challenge so the example I have here is I just have this um, app here and it's an express app and it's listens on port 3000 and I have a simple route here to this um, path slash welcome and it just loads this welcome.html page so if I just start up the server I'll show you so if we go to localhost 3000 slash welcome we have this right here and what we have on this page is we have an, a header with an ID of question saying what's your name then we have an input box right here and it's got a name of name and an ID of name then we have a button with an ID of submit name and what this button does is if I put a name into here like Oscar and then cl click submit it'll say welcome space and then whatever name I put into here so that's essentially what this does and that's been put into this um, paragraph called response you can just see that the on click of the button just selects the um, text um, put, puts the text content of the paragraph to the whatever value it got from the name and we're going to be using zombie to test that this process works correctly so the first thing we need to do is um, if we look at package.json we don't have zombie installed so we need to install it and the package name is just zombie so what we do is in the, ter in the terminal we just do npm install zombie like this and this will go ahead and install zombie for us and yeah that's it by the way zombie is completely independent of chai so it's got nothing to do with chai whatsoever so we're not going to be using chai at all so now that we have zombie installed, um, what I'm just going to do is create a new file to run our tests in. I'm just going to call it zombie underscore tests dot js. And the first thing we have to do, with, like any other node module, is that we have to require it. So zombie essentially is used to create these um, browser instances, I guess, that can go ahead and do a bunch of stuff like visit URLs or click buttons and things like that, things a user would do. So what we can just say here is we can just say let browser equals require zombie. And um, what this is, is it just imports this browser class that zombie provides. The next thing to do is create a browser to use. So we can just say something like let browser and I'm just going to use small letters here equals and then we can call new browser here with this class. And this will create a new browser for us. And let's just take a quick look at this browser. So I'll just do console.log browser and um, if I run that, oops, not that one, um, node zombie tests.js and we take a look at the browser we can see that it's got a bunch of methods and a bunch of fields and stuff a lot of stuff about like tabs and requests and um yeah we have a lot of stuff that we can do with it but the most important thing that we need to set is the site um field right here and this site field is basically um the web address that we'll be running our tests on so that's the first thing to do so we can say um, browser dot site equals and then we can put the url of our app in and this one is just, at, you just put the base URL here, by the way. So this is localhost 3000. And if you're running um, a glitch app, it'll be the live app link right here. So that's the first thing we need to set. So now our browser will use this as a base URL for all our testing. So the first um, method that I want to talk about is the visit method. And what the visit method does is you can give it a path to visit and it basically um, loads the document from whatever path you give it. So it'll call get and load this welcome page. And the first argument you give it is a URL path, which which gets added to your root path that we set up in site. And then uh, we also have a callback function. So once this is completed, um, we can run the code inside the callback function. 
And um, by the way, whenever we're doing something that might require a bit of waiting, so we have to wait for the server to do something like return a page, or when we submit a form and we wait for the response, we should use a callback function because um, the, the server might be slow and our next line of code, we wanna make sure we don't execute it. So we wanna call the visit method on the browser and the route to this um, page right here is just slash welcome. So we'll just copy and paste that in as our path. So that's that's where we'll visit. And then the second argument is just a callback function. And this callback function doesn't take in anything, it's just there to run the code. So now what this browser zombie will do is it'll go ahead and visit this URL and we have this document to work with. So the first thing I want to test is if this, um, what is your name? Um, header thing exists just so we know that the page is loaded and this is where we'll look at the element method so the element method what you do is you give it a css selector for an element and um hang on sorry it's an assert method so we can use browser.assert to run any of the assertion tests and zombie comes with a bunch of assertion tests and we want to use the element assertion and what this does is um it checks if a particular element with a CSS selector exists. Alternatively, we can use the elements method where we can provide a selector and account and it checks if that many of that element exists. But we can, so let's use that one actually. So we want to test here if, actually we'll use the single element method since we're just working with one element. So we want to test if an element, um, a H2 element with an ID of question exists. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll say browser.assert.element and inside it, we can give a selector. So we can say um, h2 and then the ID is question and paste that in to there. And um, if, so let's let's try running that now. So we'll say node um, zombie test.js and we can see that um, nothing actually happens in here because this is past the test. Um, the way we can check if this is working properly is if I just change the um, ID right here, we can we should hopefully see that it fails here. And yeah, we can see that it failed. So if, if nothing happens, it means we've passed the tests. So the next thing we wanted to do is we want to type a name into this box. Then we want to press this button and then we want to look at this paragraph that gets generated. So I'm just going to create a name variable here. So I'll just say let name equals, and I'll put something like poppy. And um, what we'll do is we need to, the, so the next method we'll look at is the fill method. And this is just a standard browser method. It's not a browser reset. So we can just use browser.fill. And this takes in, um, two or three arguments potentially. So the first argument is a selector for the input that we want to fill out. So if we take a look at this um, input right here, it's got an ID of name, so we can use that. So what we want to do is a browser.fill and then um, we'll put the ID of name. So that's ID of name right here. Um, hang on, there we go. Okay, so the next argument is the value that we want to fill the box with right here. And the value right here is just going to be our name that we generated here. And the third argument is a callback function to run um, once this we got we, once this is completed. But we don't really need to use a callback function here because um, when we type something into a box, unless we until we press a button or something, we don't have to wait for the um, website to actually do anything or run any code. So if we if I put something into here, it's, it's instantaneous, so we don't have to wait. So the next method we're gonna look at is the press button. And the press button method basically allows you to simulate pressing a button. So that's this button right here that we want to press. So what we'll do is we'll call the press button method on the browser. And um, the first argument is a selector for the button. And um, if we have a look here, we can see that the button has an ID of submit name. So I can just put um, ID and then submit name like this. Um, remember to make it into a string as well. I'm just gonna double check that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so 
the, that's it. Um, the second argument is the callback function um, to run once the browser has finished doing whatever it's doing. So if you were doing a form, for example, it would wait for the uh, response from the post. But in this case, we're pressing a button. We should still use a callback function though because we're waiting on this um, JavaScript method, remember? So this is kind of a simulation of a, um, a response being returned. So we want to use a callback function here because once we press that button, we need to wait for the um, server to do something. So we'll give a callback function here. So what this will do is it'll fill out the name with this name and then it will press this button. So the final thing that we want to test is, if I put a name into here, um, we want to test that um, this paragraph with an ID of response contains this welcome text right here. So this is where we're going to look at the um, text assertion. So we'll say browser.assert.text. And this is the text assertion right here. So um, let me just go to the official method. So that's what we need to do. So let's say here, browser.assert.text. And the text method, the first argument it takes in is once again, a CSS selector. So we wanna look at the text in the um, paragraph element with an ID of response. So we can, in here, we can just put um, P and then ID of response. By the way, the paragraph isn't really needed since IDs are unique, but I just put it in there anyway. And the second argument is the expected text that we wanted to have. And um, remember that we wanted to have the text of hello and then a space and then whatever the name was. And remember that we stored the name in this um, variable right here. So what this will do now is it'll go to this page. It will check if this question um, element exists. Then it will fill out the form with the name and this name here is Poppy and then it'll press this button and see if that text comes up. So let's try running that now. Um, actually, you, since this asserts throw a failure, what I can just do here is say, if all of, if none of this is thrown a failure or an error, you can just say all tests passed. So if I save that and run this, uh, we can see that we actually get an assertion error. And that's because um, I put here that I was testing for the text in the box to have say hello and then the name, but I forgot that it's actually welcome and then the name. So we want to just change this hello into welcome. It's a good thing that we that I um, got that wrong actually because we could see that it's actually testing it properly. So if we terminate that and run it again, um, we can see that all the tests have passed. So what, again, what it's done is it's um, filled out the name, pressed the button, and then checked if the paragraph contains this text. Um, one other um, thing that I failed to cover was um, checking the status. So once we load the page or we load the welcome page, the first thing we want to check is the status. So we have to say browser.assert.status here. And inside this, um, we can give a status code that we want to test. So um, just to, for the purpose of testing if it works properly, I'm going to give it a 404 status code of not found. And if I run this, it should fail because the page has been returned. Yeah, as you can see, and it's got an actual of 200. And we can see here that when we load the page, it, um, it returns 304 because it's cached right now. But if I empty the cache and do a hard reload, um, it, you can see it returns a 200. So we can say status 200. So if we put status 200 like this, this is a way of testing that it was successful. Another way is just to call the success method. And the success method basically checks if the status was 200. And if we run that, um, we should see that all the tests have passed because this welcome page is loaded successfully. I should have probably done that at the start, but I failed to do that again. Um, so that's all the methods that we've covered. So we've covered the success method, the element method, fill method, the press button method, and the text method. But there's so many um, assertion methods in here, like there's methods for like testing the style and stuff like that. Um, if you go to the NPM page for zombie, there's a list of all the methods right there. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna look at the challenge and um, let's have a look at what's going on here. So we're down to, um, 
here. So they've required this browser right here. And by the way, you can set the um, site on the browser class. You don't have to declare the browser first. All this does is make sure that any browser you create after that will have its site set to this. So like we set the site um, here to localhost 3000, we want to set this site to our project page, which is this right here. And this is the live app page that um, Glitch provides. So the first thing we want to do is set our um, site. So this is the site that it looks at. And remove the extra slash, by the way, because we're going to be putting the slashes in our roots. OK, so um, we should skip the example. So now we're down to here, where it's now it's your turn. And this is what this challenge essentially is. So um, what they've done is uh, they've already visited the home page for us right here. So we don't have to worry about doing the visit part. So we're basically up to here now. So the first thing we want to do is check that the status is 200. So we, we have to say browser.assert.status200 like this. Or um, I think with the one they want you to use is a success method, which checks if the status um, is successful. Um, you can also see that they've already put the surname Colombo into the form and they've pressed the button. Um, this kind of method training, by the way, is is from um, an older version of Zombie. This is 4.2 or something. In the latest version, I tried it um, with like version 6. Point something that the one that it is currently right now. And this kind of training doesn't isn't allowed anymore. So you have to keep putting browser dot fill browser dot press button. So once we press the button, we've asserted that we have an OK status. The next thing we need to do is check if the element with the span of the span element with an ID of name is Cristoforo. So if we put, um, hang on, I'm just going to open the dev tools. And if I put um, uh, Columbo into here and submit that, we have this um, element here, which is a, hang on, let me just select it. Yeah, we have this span ID of name, and we want to make sure that this is equal to this Christopher right here. So we can use a text method for this. So we can say browser. Remember the so the browser dot assert dot text and remember the text method. The first argument is selector. So we want to select the span element with the ID of name. Oops, press the wrong button there. Um, with the ID of name. Then we want to check if the um name field, oh sorry, the span element has the text of Christopher right here. So we can just copy it from here actually. So we this is the string that we want to test it against. Then we may need to check if the surname, span surname element has the text Columbo. So if we look at this, um, I think it's this one right here. So yeah, we have span ID of surname and it should be Columbo. So we want to do browser.assert and again we're going to use the text and we want to check if the span with the ID of surname has the text Columbo. Okay, so finally, we want to check if the span element with the ID of date exists. So that's um, this right here, span ID of date. And we just want to check if that exists. So we can use the browser.assert, and we can use the element method here. And um, we put this span surname thing in here, but it's going to be span date this time. So span and then dates. And when in this older version of um, zombie, by the way, even if you're using the single element method, um, like they've done here, you still have to put the count. So it says the count is one. So we just want to say one. So what this should do is it'll fill out the surname Columbo and then press the submit button. And then it will check if it was successful first and there was no errors. So it returned um, 200 like it did here. 
Then what it will do is it will check if the element with an I, the span element with an ID of name, this one right here, has a text Cristoforo. It'll then check if the span element with the ID of surname, which is this one right here, is Colombo. Then it will check if the span element with the ID of dates, which is this one, exists and there's one of those elements. And if none of that should throw an error, we need to make sure that we get rid of this assert.fail, by the way because that, that, that'll throw an error. Then we'll run this done function and it'll tell free code camp we're finished and we can mark our solution. So that should be everything we need to do there. I know it was a really long video, but I wanted to cover a lot there. So if you submit that, hopefully, yeah, we can see that everything has passed. So now you should hopefully know how to use a headless browser to do testing from a user perspective.